Okay, good folks. Hellshears Haven is back. Um, after a bit of a respite, where I was mainly pretty much busy receiving more typewriters. But yeah, it's been a bit more than a year since the last time I did typing outdoors. Um, I have this wooden folding table, same one, arranged like this to help um, ease out the side-to-side -side vibrations and hopefully allow this machine to type more nicely outdoors. Um, so, yep, I have here the Torpedo 18B typewriter, produced in Germany um, in the 1960s. Um, yeah, I guess today I already have so many machines, so I'm not going to bother telling you which number this one is. Hmm. Probably best to change the angle under this sunlight. I uh, actually had to wait a bit for two for the cloud cover to let up. So, yeah. Wonderful, portable typewriter. Typically, these are considered fairly desirable, even within North America. Um, those which were imported with a QWERTY layout. Now, if what makes this a Torpedo 18B, as opposed to a Torpedo 18, is its inclusion of a tabulator mechanism. Um, so, yep, that should, okay, fortunately it seems like the um, tab setting mechanism got a bit sticky, um, I was at least able to get some to be set, but yeah, I'm not sure if that's expected. Yeah, something's probably sticky, but yeah, the idea is that you can press this guy in um, to push out one of the keys in the key set. And that allows you to basically set your tab stops when you're doing like counting data or whatever and making tables. Now for a quick beauty shot. You'll see at the back here, it says Remington Rand. Um, now, I actually haven't researched the exact history behind the association of these two companies. I actually think some later Remington branded machines without the Torpedo branding were in fact Torpedoes internally. Um, but yeah, this is my machine. Um, got it on eBay, came with a nice case. That's the paper stand. Here's your paper release for when you're done typing a page or midway and you want to remove the paper. Carriage release. Same thing on the other side. Again, if you want to ship one of these, make sure you get the seller to tie, tie this around the platen knob to help protect the escapement from damage. That's your detent release. Then your clutch release. For going through the page, and that's for your line spacing. If you want to do single spacing or double spacing, etc. And of course, your color select. So, that's stencil mode black for typing on the top of the ribbon, red for typing on the bottom of the ribbon. Um, now, I'll say something about again my history with this machine. So, as you would have seen from the previous repair video on this typewriter, it came to me with some issues with the carriage, um, as well as the hitting of the left Martin stop where it might bounce a bit, and also just that, yeah, the carriage was pretty loud and rattly. It's still rattly a bit, but a lot quieter than it used to be. Yep. So now you get nice and smooth. Um, Carriage flicking, carriage turning, safe here. Typing really fast and want to get to the next line very quickly. Um, so I had to fix that. There was also a thing, um, yeah, like these machines were generally pretty hyped and go for a lot on eBay, at least in the North American market. And 
I've always heard people call this, the touch of this machine, light, which I honestly couldn't believe once I received mine, since it felt rather heavy compared to especially my Olympia SM4, which has an exquisitely light touch. Um, basically, the fourth curve is a lot more focused toward the front, or the start of the stroke, making it feel a bit heavier. Another thing was that this machine kind of seemed like it was equipped with heavier springs, and that's particularly evident in this bar here. This bar actuates the ribbon advance mechanism and the ribbon vibrator, and typically on many machines you'll find that either the touch control is heavy, so the touch control um, would basically allow you to set the how stretched the return spring for this bar is, and that would give you a heavier touch. Um, so ultimately I figured that I could actually successfully unlink that spring. I forget exactly where it was, but after doing that, that very much improved the touch and helped me to better ascertain why people were so pleased with these machines and called them light and fast. So, yeah, basically, this went from being one of my least favorite typewriters to being very much uh, quite high tier machine and quite a nice performer, though I definitely do need to replace a platen. Um, but yeah, now that we know about its functions, um, let's do some typing. Yep, so make sure your paper release is released, and then you can push this guy to help you feed the paper. And if you want to align to an existing line on an existing page or on a form, you can use this guy to give you more granular control of the page position. Um, and if you want to set the margins, press these, push left and right. Then we're all set. Oops. Yeah, paper release if you want to adjust the line of the page with respect to your scale. So, for example, there's a line here. Now, this paper guy doesn't have that much friction on it, so it tends to slide around, fortunately. August 21, 4, 11, Well, now 12. PM, ST. As you can see, nice carriage flicking, quite fast. Now, because this table here is rather wobbly, um, the typing performance won't be ideal, or you'll get some side-to-side -side vibrations that prevent the characters from being well-aligned. Nice and fast machine.
though still a bit soft, are rather crusty in need of replacement. Um, Yeah, so to describe the typing feel, um, basically compared to an Olympia, um, or at least your later Olympias will generally be a bit lighter, maybe springier on some occasions, but you can adjust that to be um, um, to be lighter. Um, Olympia's basically the type action has a smaller inertia, and while when you're typing on this machine, um, you will feel a bit more of the weight and impact of the presses. But something about it and the increased acceleration at the start of the press kind of does help you to release the keys a bit sooner, or at least quicker, more quickly, or kind of get like a bit of a rebound. And from that, it becomes a bit easier to, like, um, really lift your fingers fast and sequence these type bars in much faster succession. And of course, if you use a good technique, you can get quite nice carriage flick. So carriage flicking is a technique that you use when you want to type fast and get to the next line very quickly. So that's basically your old school enter key. Um, so yeah, overall I can say this is a very nice machine, highly recommend. This particular model, though of course there are many other models to check out, and they all have unique typing experiences. Oh, and I'm not sure if this is the case for all torpedoes, or at least all later ones, but I do find the feel of the backspace rather heavy and tactile. Like, really strong force and then round and then sudden drop. Not to my preference, I do have an earlier Torpedo 12 typewriter where it's not like that, and of course the type action on that machine is much more different. Um, so, now I'm going to talk a bit about the type action at least, and eventually transition to some simulations for demonstrating this mechanism, and basically how these geometries influence the feel of the typewriter. So you can see here, when you press the key, there's a link at the bottom here that pulls on the back of these bell cranks. So a bell crank is basically a subclass of lever where the pivots are not collinear. Um, I'm not sure, like I know about class 1, class 2, and class 3 levers. Um, you might call this a class 1 bell crank, but I'm not sure if that's the proper terminology. Um, so you have your effort on this end, fulcrum, and then your load on this end with the link that pulls on the bottom of your type bar. So yeah, basically this whole setup is common across many um, machines from the 30, 20s, 30s, and on, um, with minor or sometimes major geometric variations in style and layout, which can lead to very different feeling typewriters, um, which is, I guess, what really makes this collecting hobby so rich, because you know, there's always a new machine with a new look and a completely new typing experience and new discoveries to make. Oh, and if you're looking for the serial number on your Torpedo 18B, here it is. Okay, so that was the Torpedo 18B typewriter. Now, if you want to get the ribbon cover back on, a lot of machines tend to use these like springs as detents for these retaining tabs. I live a few kilometers away from Toronto Pearson Airport, so you get that often.
paper lease if you want to remove the paper. All right, so that's that. If you enjoyed this video or find typewriters interesting and want to learn more about their history and how they work, feel free to like and subscribe.